Hello guys, in this video we will talk about aircraft icing, how does it form, different types, its dangers and how to avoid it. Two conditions are necessary for icing to form and stay on your airplane. First, the airplane must be flying through some visible water such as rain or cloud droplets. And second, the temperature of the water or of the aircraft must be 0 degrees Celsius or lower. Always keep in mind that aerodynamic cooling as the air passes through your wings can lower the temperature of an airfoil to 0 degrees Celsius even though the ambient temperature is a few degrees warmer. Before we introduce the different types of icing we can have, let's talk about some of the dangers of icing encounters. The fundamental effect of all icing is to change the basic aerodynamics of your airplane. Icing forms fast and pilots should have a quick response to it. Stall speed increases by as much as 16% with the first one eighth of an inch of ice. If ice forms in your induction system, airflow to the engine can be chucked off reducing power. Control surfaces become unresponsive or immovable. The weight of the accumulated ice can rapidly put you past your maximum gross weight and can cause the airplane to exceed its CG limits, resulting in undesirable nose up or nose down attitudes. Essentially, icing will destroy all the characteristics of aerodynamic shape and power. It's a threat pilots need to know how to avoid and handle if encountered. Now, we will introduce the two most common types of ice. We will start with rime ice, which forms whenever small water droplets like those found in stratus clouds freeze instantly on a collecting surface. The highest moisture content in stratus clouds will generally be found near the top of the cloud, where the cloud is the wettest. Thus, it is best to get as low as possible to avoid the wettest part of the cloud. In the course of getting frozen, air is trapped, giving the ice a milky appearance. It usually forms on the leading edge of airfoils, but it does not flow back over the wing and tail surfaces. Rime ice generally forms in temperatures ranging between minus 15 degrees Celsius to minus 20 degrees Celsius and is less dense and it's easier to remove than clear ice. Clear ice forms when large supercooled water droplets freeze on an aircraft surface. Smaller amounts of air is trapped during the freezing process, resulting in ice that's relatively clear. Because it contains less air, clear ice is heavier than an equivalent quantity of rime ice. It also forms fast and is very difficult to remove. These large supercooled water droplets found in cumulus clouds are not easily deflected by the curved airflow around the wing and the fuselage. That means that the rate of ice secretion is higher than with smaller water droplets. Clear ice generally forms in temperatures ranging between 0 degrees Celsius to minus 10 degrees Celsius. And lastly, I want to talk about mixed ice which forms whenever you encounter some large supercooled water droplets and some finer or smaller droplets or even worse freezing rain. It forms in temperatures ranging between minus 10 degrees Celsius and minus 15 degrees Celsius. Now, in the event your aircraft has an inadvertent icing encounter, there are several steps to take if you refer to your aircraft's operating handbook. In this example, we will refer to a Cessna 172 SP POH. And the first step will be to turn on pitot heat to eliminate any potential ice buildup on the pitot tube that could affect your pitot static system. And if you suspect icing buildup on the static port due to erroneous instrument reading, using your alternate static source will be the only alternative. For aircrafts equipped with carburetor systems, if engine power is reduced, carburetor icing can be eliminated with the use of carburetor heat. The next step will be to either make a 180 degree turn and try to exit IMC conditions if they were recently encountered and change of altitude to obtain temperatures less conductive to ice. In a limited power airplane such as a Cessna 172, a better option will be to begin a descent trying to find warmer temperatures that could stop the ice buildup. Climbing is rarely a good option considering that ice encounters in certain cumulus clouds can still happen with temperatures as low as 40 degrees Celsius. One could consider a climb only if you're certain where the cloud tops are and if your aircraft will still have the capacity to reach those altitudes. Remember that ice builds up quick and pilots need to have a decisive response to it. Step 3 consists in using cabin heat and open and defroster outlets to try to obtain maximum windshield heated airflow that can eliminate and melt the ice that might have formed on the windshield. 
As part of step 4, we will watch for signs of engine related issues. Blockage of the air induction filter can lead to a 10% power loss if the engine is using the air from the alternate door in the induction system. In rare circumstances, ice could completely block the fuel injection air reference tubes. Change the throttle position for maximum RPMs to avoid propeller ice buildup that might lead to unwanted vibrations, and adjust your mixture as required. Step 5 consists of finding a suitable landing airport, if ice is building fast an off airport landing spot might be required. As we already know, icing changes the aerodynamic design of our wing, so be prepared for a potential increase in stall speed and longer landing roll. Step 7 consists in leaving flaps retracted if we have ice building up in the tail. Changing the aerodynamic airflow by using flaps might leave you without elevator control and a potential tail stall. Remember that if you experience a dramatic drop of the airplane's nose, tail stall recovery is completely opposite from the procedures required to recover from a wing stall. You have to pull the yoke back, opposite to the action for a wing stall recovery. This will reduce the angle of attack of the tail plane and move it away from its critical angle of attack. In step 8, use your hand if practical to scrape eyes that might have formed on the windshield to increase forward visibility during landing. And lastly, if required, a forward slip during landing can help with visibility if ice is covering your windshield. Remember that according to the Cessna 172 POH, flight into known icing conditions is prohibited. So don't hesitate in declaring an emergency if required, and never let ATC fly your plane. Icing is IFR pilot's greatest nemesis, so always use ATC as an aid to get you out of this potential hazard. And finally, now that we understand what icing does and what to do if encountered, let's talk about ways in which we can prevent it. And it all comes down to obtaining a good weather briefing. We will start by checking the freezing level chart to know where we will find temperatures below freezing to try to select and plan our cruising altitudes. Then, we will check air mets and sig mets forecasting icing conditions and avoid flying through the depicted areas laterally and vertically if we are not equipped with de-icing systems. We will continue by checking pyreps. Remember that the most accurate weather source is for someone that is visibly experiencing icing conditions, so look for pyreps that might be affecting your route of flight. Then, we will check the GFA tool and use the cloud option to forecast cloud tops and ceilings. Remember that in order for ice to form, we need visible moisture, so if we plan our flight outside of clouds, even with freezing temperatures, ice has no way of forming. We can also use the ice forecast on the GFA tool that can also guide us in determining potential icing encounters. Lastly, we will use our winds aloft to check our forecast and route temperatures. If we see anything below 10 or 5 degrees Celsius, is a good indication that possible ice might form if visible moisture is present. And there you have it guys, I hope with this video Easy Flight was able to help you have a better understanding of icing related issues. And like General Sun Tzu once said, know your enemy and know yourself, and you can fight a hundred battles with icing without disaster. And don't forget to subscribe and to check our other courses at myeasyflight.com. Thanks for watching.